All right. You think we can call ourselves foodies? No. No. No, I agree. I can think of a few friends right now who would just laugh at us if we said that. I feel like I'm a food snob. Ooh. You know, I'm picky about my food, but that's almost worse because I'm not knowledgeable enough about my food to say why I like something one way or, oh, this ingredient is from here and has to be done like that. I just am picky. But we do love to cook. <laughs> and we do love food. Yes, yes, for sure. And we have been on a quest for some time for the perfect non-stick pot. Pan. 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 Where'd that come from? <laughs> so the obvious answer is Teflon or one of those derivatives. And those have always creeped me out a little bit. Yeah, what are they made of exactly? Why doesn't stuff stick on them? Yeah. Yeah. They're strange. And I feel like you have to be really delicate with them because if you scratch it a little bit or something oh, like that, yeah. then it's flaking off and coming off in your food. And you, uh, no, oh. don't want that. But then, there's these. All right. And we always had one of these in our cabinet, but it, it's sticky. Yeah, so they work great for certain things. Well, actually, now I know they work great for everything, but back then, you know, eggs, um, warming things up again crack it stick it on yeah wait 10 seconds <laughs> that's kind of pretty much it yeah yeah so but now we're gonna claim that this is the answer to non-stick pans yes yes although there are subtleties yes there are subtleties indeed but we're going to make the claim an argument and convince you hopefully that these are inexpensive that they are basically indestructible, that they are, have awesome non-stick capabilities, despite our first egg experiences, and that if you have some of these in your pantry, you're gonna be, you're gonna be happier than, in the long run, than you're gonna be with those Teflon pans. Probably one of the things I like best about these guys, though, is that they remind me of the good old days way back when when things were built to last and you could just pass this down generation after generation and it would only get better these will literally outlive you yeah and be given to your children grandchildren they last forever so if you stick around ha huh, get it stick around uh, uh, uh. <laughs> we have a secret to reveal to you at the end of the video yes how what is get, the secret the secret is how to get these for very very inexpensive and how to select them correctly so you get gold almost well just for a few dollars i thought it was actually cast iron yeah oh my it's jokes just are heavy. terrible today <laughs> Wonk. <laughs> we use cast iron for all our cooking and the secret the other secret secret is that it develops a seasoning on it and there's gonna be lots of videos and advice out there, some of it seems almost superstitious, oh, yeah. about how to keep your pan from rusting and how to keep it working in good shape. But you know, I gotta tell you, I'm a lazy person. It's a lot easier than that. I cannot get up on the full moon and wash it in rose water standing on my head upside down. It's just not gonna work. It's all about using your pan. Yeah, it actually is a very low maintenance tool once we get to know it. Let's do a super quick education on what the seasoning is. So what we have is that we have oils that get baked onto the surface of the iron. It's a process called polymerization. As that happens, it creates that non-stick coating that we know and love. Standard non-stick pots, that coating is really delicate. As I mentioned before, if you're using a metal spatula or something, and you dig into it, yeah. This guy is not delicate at all. Very robust. And the most beautiful thing about this is that every time you cook with it, the coating gets thicker and stronger and more nonstick. Might have said it before, but it's kind of funny how this old technology has a few more advantages than the new stuff they're cranking out. That is very true, isn't it? Just saying. Hmm. If you do buy a new cast iron pan, you're going to need to season it. All you're going to do is rub it, all the entire surface, 
with a vegetable oil. And then use a cloth to wipe that oil off so there's just a thin sheen on it. Then put it in your oven like this, and then you're gonna turn on your oven at 450, 30 minutes, and it's gonna smell a little bit. Yeah, you don't wanna be in the house for that part. At least I don't like that part. Yeah. Yeah. But if you find one of these at a thrift store, if you find a used one, it's probably already going to have a base seasoning so you can skip that seasoning step. And you can go right to the part where you just cook with it. You might wanna wash it off first, you know. True, true. Well, maybe some people don't, I would, but. <laughs> I won't the, judge, the I high. won't judge. <laughs> so this is a relationship. These are gonna become your friends. And over time, you're gonna learn how to use them. And as you cook in them more and more, they're gonna develop that seasoning more and more. And you'll get to know each pan individually. I have one pan that I almost, I don't let anybody touch except for cooking eggs in because <laughs> it is so smooth and perfect and wonderful and non-stick. I love that you call it a relationship. A lot of our modern day items, they're just, they're made to break. But these, you're, you're gonna develop this over years and years and years. And so every time you cook, you're adding to that relationship and you're making this better and stronger over time. It's so different than our modern cookware. Well, and we use it for, as we said, everything. So you can do, you know, stir fries and we've done eggs and we have some that we use outside for camping. We usually keep those just for camping because they get black on the bottom. But each pan is going to have kind of things you use it for specifically and then another pan for something else, which kind of becomes sort of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Now to keep your relationship strong with your pan, you're going to hear a lot of times, and I think it's pretty good advice, don't use soap uh, in here. Okay. What? Well, I use soap. I mean, not on certain pans, but on certain of our cast iron, it doesn't seem to bother it. And it's not like I put a ton of soap on there. It's just that I have soap on what I'm using and then it gets on there, but I've never seen anything wrong with it and you didn't even notice. What? I use soap too. What? <laughs> <laughs> so all these years we've been using soap and we haven't ever told each other. Cause all I hear is you should never use soap on these and you tell other people. So, that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there is. I was always quiet. Oh my gosh, I hope I never find Secretly out using, using soap. soap and we've both been doing it. <laughs> There is a, you know, we're trying to keep an oil coating on here. So if you slather it with soap, you're taking that oil coating Yeah, especially off. every time. Sometimes you can just wipe them clean and put them back. Yeah. Yeah. But occasionally. Yeah. These pans are tough. You can get in there with a metal spatula and scrape anything that sticks. If things do get really stuck, feel free to soak it for an hour or so to loosen things up. Then rinse it with very hot water, shake the water out, and wipe dry with a cloth. Or better yet, skip the rinse. When your pan is cool, just wipe it out with a cloth and put it in the cupboard. Um, yeah, okay about that. I sometimes... Another I, revelation here. What is you this? You know, some people hang their pans, but we set ours. I sometimes don't even wipe it clean. If there's not much oil in it, I just leave it in there. Just put it in there. Yeah, well, I mean, so there's one pan I use every day almost, and if there's a little oil in there, it's fine. Now I know where to go if I'm really hungry oh, during the no, day. Oh no, gross. <laughs> okay, so we know it's okay to soak this, but what happens if you forget about it for a while? Good question. Yeah. Good question. If you leave water in your pot and it doesn't have a super thick seasoning, it can rust. It, this is an example here. We left this out overnight, but it looks worse than it actually is. You see a lot of rust, but all we're going to do is run it under hot water and scrub hard with an abrasive cleaning pad. Then rub it with a little bit of oil and voila, your pan is ready to use again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you said that we were going to share a little secret. Yeah. So let's jump into that. Okay. This is really interesting. And this is something we learned from a friend of ours who... Recently. Was, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You, you tell. Me? Yeah. Me. Okay. Yeah. So he told us that there is a difference between modern cast iron pots and old ones. Why am I not surprised? <laughs> it's kind of been the story of this video a little <laughs> bit, isn't it? <laughs> oh, well. And we did some research on this. And he's absolutely correct. 
before, I think it's around 1950 or so, when people made these pots, they smoothed them afterwards. So they took a lot of time and effort to make the iron smooth. And the advantage of that is food doesn't get down in there and stick. You look at modern pots, they come to you and they look like they're covered in sand. And that actually has to do with the casting process. We're not going to get into that today, but it is essentially marks from sand. And those marks, that's why we have to spend so much time seasoning the modern mm -hmm. ones. And we have to fill in all of these pits in order to make a non-stick coating. I got to say, my egg pan that I use is one of the old ones. And it is so amazingly smooth, like a baby's oh, bottom. It's amazing. Did I say that? <laughs> but it is and that's, mom, you can say that. that's what makes it so beautiful to cook with yeah and the clean is it's very very smooth i love it you can find these this is the big cast iron pan yes secret. yes a thrift store sometimes antique stores they don't always know the value of those old pans now we saw one the other day at a place Namish place and they know they the know. value of it. Oh, they know. <laughs> so it was priced at $48, but that's still, I think, the price that you're going to pay for a new inferior one. Yeah. But we have seen these for five, ten dollars at thrift stores, sometimes a little bit more at an antique store. And what you're looking for is you're going to look not just at the bottom, you need to look at the other surfaces. Look at the handle. Look at the sides, the outer sides. Those should all have a, a smoothness. And they're not going to be perfectly smooth, but they're not going to look like they're covered in sand. Is this a good example? This Why is a not? great example, yeah. And as we showed you before, you can see in those close-ups, if you remember, we've got this smooth, smooth coating as compared to the modern day sand coating. So weren't you telling me that there is a modern company Butter pat, butter pat. Butter industries. pat industry. <laughs> that make them the old way? What we're seeing, you know, my hope is that as time goes on here, we see more and more people returning to these kind of old fashioned ways of doing things because a lot of times those ways weren't cutting all the corners and they made things that lasted forever. So, yeah, butter pat sells ones that are made the old way, but Ooh, you're gonna you're gonna pay a lot of money for okay. one of those pots. How much? How much is one of these? Uh, I'm gonna say for this pan here, I, I'm not exactly sure. I can't remember, but I'm gonna say it was between three or four hundred dollars. Whoa, whoa! I mean, okay, yes, you're getting something that lasts forever, but yeah, wow. They have a hundred year guarantee. Oh, yeah, you'd have to pass that on to your kids. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe not. Maybe if someone gifted it to you when you were one, and then you turned one hundred and one. Well, yeah, yeah, could happen. <laughs> But yes, you can get the same thing by going to your thrift stores, looking carefully at your pots. Now, sometimes you're going to see one and there's going to be some rust in there. So we're checking there to see if it's a superficial rust or if it's eaten down into the surface. Mm, if it's it. eaten down into the surface, this is iron. It's cast iron, so it can rust. And that's the Achilles heel of these guys. So what do you think? Have you experienced cast iron before? Tell us your experiences, what you know about them, what you love about them, what you cook in them. Give us some feedback. <laughs> yeah, your hints and tricks mm -hmm. to keep a good seasoning on there. And whew, can't wait to see what you have to say in the comments. Mm -hmm.